Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Discussions are underway for an improved action plan to bolster the agro-tourism subsector. A concerted effort is being made by the government of St. Lucia to engage nationals in the diaspora. Ballot approves the page turner for reading month. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arquail. Discussions are underway for an improved action plan to further efforts on agro-tourism in St. Lucia, a move both agriculture and tourism officials say is timely as leaders in the two industries identify areas where they can partner to bolster increased productivity, sustainability and overall economic performance of both sectors. More from Amanda Faye Clark. The Agritourism Agenda Setting Meeting brought together key officers at the Ministry of Agriculture and Tourism, local stakeholders including CARDI and the SLHDA, and regional agriculture development organizations such as ECA and the OECS, whose mission is to oversee the diversification of agriculture economies. Speaking at the opening ceremony of the CTA-funded Agrotourism meeting, ECO representative in Barbados and agrotourism specialist Enna Harvey says St. Lucia's agrotourism actions should center heavily on agri-food constituents and the livelihoods these intended initiatives would impact. We need to be clear on why we are into tourism and who should benefit from tourism. Local communities cannot be an afterthought or a means to an end to protect tourism investments. Tourism cannot be successful without a sustainable food production sector and climate smart agriculture. Agricultural biodiversity and heritage and the culture of food in the Caribbean enhance the value proposition of a sustainable tourism product. Agrotourism must be integrally linked to food and nutrition security and to the management of chronic non-communicable diseases. Director of Product Development at the Ministry of Tourism, Anne Margaret Adams says, St. Lucia is at a juncture where any movement in growing its tourism products must include agriculture features, and for this reason, calls for simultaneous strategic actions in developing the two industries. Agencies have attempted to develop agriculture and tourism linkages. However, a coordinated approach is critical to the success of these programs. The Ministry of Tourism is therefore pleased with the partnerships that have, that have been established through this project through CTA, OECS, and ECO. I must also mention that strategically, the Ministry has recently established the Tourism Advisory Committee as a coordinating mechanism for the tourism industry and towards advancing a more integrated approach to tourism development on the island. The committee brings together 17 institutions, government ministries, agencies, private sector organizations, and NGO, including representative, representation sorry, from the agricultural sector. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Barrymore Felicia, says the overall stance of agriculture leaders is a move for diversification of our agricultural economy, thus creating niche products which support and complement our tourism brand. Policy must therefore focus on twinning, strengthening and exploring linkages in traditional and non-traditional areas. Our policy will focus on collaborations and activities and will include enhancement of visitor experiences so that they can enjoy, relax, spend time and money for joyfulness and happiness in addition to visiting agricultural areas, doing agricultural related activities such as harvesting, planting, fishing and cooking. While we in St. Lucia ensure that they do this in a safe and secure environment. It is expected that the revised policies for streamlining agritourism initiatives will also consider building on the opportunities already available through ongoing biodiversity and climate resilient projects, creating a truly meaningful, culturally appropriate and dynamic St. Lucian experience. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Faye Clark reporting. Meantime, the government of St. Lucia continues to source markets for the island's new and emerging crops, as well as current crops such as bananas. In that regard, Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney and Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, are currently in London for meetings with Winfresh. 
The meetings are being held with various suppliers, including Sainsbury, the third largest chain of supermarkets in the United Kingdom, and Waitrose and Partners, a chain of British supermarkets. The government also continues to explore new avenues with the French market, with testing of St. Lucia's products in that market expected to begin later this year. During the Prime Minister's absence, the Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Leonard Montout, will serve as Acting Prime Minister. A concerted effort is being made by the government of St. Lucia to engage nationals in the diaspora, cognizant of the contribution of overseas-based St. Lucians to their homeland and, most importantly, the untapped resources and skills they possess Government is working towards ensuring that they are an integral part of the island's development. Here's Janelle Norval with the first in a series of reports on the St. Lucian diaspora. The government of St. Lucia reaffirmed its commitment to the St. Lucian diaspora with the appointment of an ambassador responsible for diaspora affairs in the person of Her Excellency Dr. Joycelyn Clark Fletcher. Appearing on NTN's program interview, Dr. Clark Fletcher explained that the diaspora has and continues to contribute to St. Lucia. She noted that according to the World Bank, St. Lucia's diaspora contributes about $35 million in remittances annually. The Union of St. Lucia Associations is a group formed by the diaspora, and that group, according to the ambassador, will also be engaged in the fine-tuning of diaspora policy. Another initiative on the cards is the commissioning of a skills database. Persons in the diaspora will be able to go on this database and register their, their skills. All the diaspora of the world will make it available to them. It will be on the USLOA website, it will be on the government website. So employers in St. Lucia looking for skills, uh, you know you have a vacancy, let's say a biochemical engineer, before you just send it out there so that somebody who's a Canadian citizen, no Caribbean roots whatsoever, can apply because they have all that skill and apply for it. You would go to your database and see if we have any solutions that match that, any diaspora person that match to what you require. So we're not saying we just uh, because you're solution, but we're saying the database is there. Look for the skills and, and bring them in. So that we're saying that to the diaspora too. You have the opportunity to return home to those jobs in both government or the private sector. Other benefits include the diaspora traveling to and from St. Lucia for visits, allowing for foreign exchange inflows, employment created when they build their homes in St. Lucia while overseas, and by sharing the St. Lucian culture elsewhere, they entice individuals to visit the island, contributing to the growth of the tourism industry. It is for these reasons that the government has decided that it is imperative that connections between St. Lucian nationals overseas and their homeland are strengthened. As such, the ambassador indicated that the government will be providing opportunities for the diaspora to invest, to use their resources and skills, and to strengthen and develop the St. Lucian society. They are recognizing the contributions that, that the diaspora can make for our country in our social and economic development. They are opening up avenues for them to allow them to come in, investment opportunities, they're giving them the use of their resources and skills, you know, and all these things to help them return home, making it easier. We're enticing them. This office is set up to bring them um, in. And a diaspora person is recruited as the ambassador because I know I was out there. I know what my diaspora needs, what they're looking for. I know why I left. And I know that uh, what they want and it's easier for me to dialogue with them. For this purpose, the Ambassador for Diaspora Affairs has embarked on a sensitization campaign to dialogue, inform and share with the many St. Lucian associations and groups overseas. The Ambassador has visited the St. Croix Diaspora and is now going to visit the Martinique Diaspora this week. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. Sole subsidiary of ECFH Bank of St. Lucia has delivered yet another solid performance for the 2018 financial year end. The largest indigenous financial institution on Ireland has successfully sustained its high profit margins from its June 30th first half financial report published last year. 
Following an optimistic half-year report publishing 13.5 million in profits after tax, CFH is pleased to announce to its shareholders, customers, staff and the general public that despite the challenging years, the financial institution's resilience continues to pay off. In 2018, net profit after tax of EC 44.9 million was recorded compared to the 2017 year-end figure of EC 36.9 million. According to Managing Director of ECFH, Dr. Bernard Lacobigny, the company credits its successful 2018 financial year to the performance of its sole subsidiary, Bank of St. Lucia. It was a profitable year, and the success of the bank is the success of all of St. Lucia, of the communities from north to south. It's the success of the people and the businesses that borrow from the Bank of St. Lucia that benefit from the advice, from the loans for, for small businesses and medium businesses and large businesses, mortgages, advice that the bank provides to, to people in order that they may achieve their goals and objectives. And so it's a success for everybody. Dr. Lacobinier also took the time out to thank the bank's management and staff for their efficiency and hard work, which played a pivotal role in the bank's 2018 performance. In a myriad of ways, the Bank of St. Lucia is the bank of and for St. Lucians, strong, secure, and profitable. And with your support, together, we will move from strength to strength. BOSL is scheduled to present the details of its 2018 performance to over 4,400 individual shareholders at its 18th annual general meeting this Thursday, May 16th, at the Financial Administrative Complex at Point Seraphine. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Was that an earthquake? No. What do you do if there's an earthquake? Drop, cover, and hold on. What does that mean? You drop to the ground, take cover underneath a sturdy table or desk, and hold on until the shaking stops. What if there's no table or desk? Stay away from the walls, windows and doorways. Use your hands to cover your head and face and crouch in a corner of the building. But what if you're outside? Go to an open space away from buildings, trees, street lights and utility wires. Drop to your knees, protect your head with your arms and wait for the shaking to stop. Remain alert to your surroundings. Be prepared to change where you are if necessary to promote your safety. During an earthquake, anything that can move and fall, parts of a building including doors, walls and windows, furniture and appliances can be a hazard. Remember, protect yourself from anything that can move. Do not panic. As soon as you feel the ground shaking, drop, cover and hold on. This message brought to you by the Viewport South District Disaster Preparedness Committee and NEMO and funded by the USAID Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Anisha. Welcome to your segment on happenings in youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. In the secondary school's 40 overs cricket competition got underway Wednesday. St. Mary's College recording an early Group D win over Babano at the Balata playing field. The match between Castries Comprehensive Secondary School and Grosley did not take place. Grosley reportedly has withdrawn from the competition. Miku registered a very convincing nine-wicket win over Clendon Mason Memorial. Clendon Mason being dismissed for a paltry 16, with Alexis Charles bagging five wickets and Vernon Edward four. Miku replied with 17 for 1. There was a much closer contesting engagement at the PI playing field as Sufre Comprehensive batting first and scored 138 in 25.5 overs to where Schwazel replied with 125 in 24.3 overs in a Group A match. Thursday's fixture sees PI versus VFO Comprehensive at PI 
in the Group A game. Antipo plays Granny Viadla Resource Group B. So Ira Simmons plays Vidbutai at Grosley in a Group C game. And Leon Hess are down to play Cicero Secondary at Balata in Group D. Matches originally scheduled for the Mindelfele Park have all been moved to the Balata playing field. St. Lucia's team to participate in the 2019 Winnet Island Schools Games have started preparations for this year's competition, which is expected to be held in Dominica. The logistics for this year's tournament will be finalized when delegations from the four competing islands meet in Dominica for a technical meeting May 23rd and 24th. It is expected that the same five events competed in St. Lucia last year will again be the focus of play during the 2019 edition of the Winnet Island School Games. These include track and field, netball, basketball, male and female, volleyball, male and female, and football. Winners of the logo competition organized under the Youth Empowerment Project will soon be announced. The competition was held during Youth Month, the duration of April. The selection process to determine the winners is now being undertaken. The entries are being reviewed and the judges will meet to announce the winner and second and third place prize. An official prize giving ceremony will also be held. Applicants had to be under the age of 35 and live in the communities of New Village, Conway Barnard Hill and Wilton's Yard. The logo was designed under the theme Enlighten, Enrich, Empower. And that's the end of our update on new development and sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The second annual District 1 Independent Poetry Competition was held recently, showcasing the creative spirit of the young competitors. Anissa Antoine has that story. This Helen of the West from Grosley to the North to V14 in the South, every bit of its two free eight square miles is mine to enjoy. In commemoration of Reading Month and St. Lucia's 40th Independence Anniversary, the Ministry of Education, in collaboration with the Parliamentary Representative for Babono, recently hosted the second annual District 1 Independence Poetry Competition. The emerging winner of the poetry competition was Samson Charles of Balata, with Jamie and Seraphine of Fordasso and Karapa Bequestner of Bogis coming in second and third places, respectively. This is the second year that Balata has won the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain, Alan, speaking. Welcome to flight SL40 to success and victory. The weather is good, an undisturbing trip in sight. Please, Lord, may there be no hijackers on this flight. Parliamentary representative for Babono stated that being involved in extracurricular activities such as this allows students to be well-rounded individuals. I made a commitment last year, working with your district education office in Babono, in District 1, that will continue to have this activity. We believe it's a good activity, whilst we have seen football and cricket now in Babono, and we have a number of teams throughout the, the constituency participating in football and cricket. I am aware that not every child, not every student are interested in football and cricket. They have other interests. And that is why when I met with Mr. Sipal and the staff members in District 1, we decided that apart from the football and the cricket, what else can we do? And today, we are seeing the second attempt at the poultry competition. Cyrus Sipal, District 1 Education Officer, informed that in the following years, an annual essay competition will be added to the schedule of reading month activities. The whole idea is to get them to learn. And this is our motto. We have promised Honorable Minister that the Babono Schools and Education District 1, we will get every child to learn, ladies and gentlemen. And this we will do not just by ourselves but it will be a holistic approach. We are going to have the Honorable Minister on board. We are going to have the Constituency Council on board. We are going to have the judges on board, the firemen, the police, the parents, the media. Um, just name it. We are going to have everybody on, um, on board because at the end of the day, 
If a child leaves primary school and they go to Mr. Fennell or at the secondary school and they have not mastered the basic prerequisites of numeracy and literacy, ladies and gentlemen, they will not be able to excel at the secondary schools. Participants of the poetry competition received prizes including book vouchers, trophies and laptops. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. In this poetry competition. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. The problem starts with finding a suitable spot. It extends to double parking. Offloading zones are ignored, thus inconveniencing commercial activity. Handicapped spots are occupied by drivers who use the quick errand excuse. And of course, there's the constant fear of parking tickets. In an effort to curb these and other parking-related issues, the Castry City Council will be implementing short-term paid parking. $3 an hour can save you $500 in parking tickets. Short-term paid parking, coming soon. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. Merci au temps, Nisha. Monsieur, Madame, Département qui n'est pas responsable pour information, le gouvernement de cette ici, GIS, à ce moment-là, télévision nationale pays à NTN, qui a posé au Nouvelle Arquion, président au Primus Hutchinson. Ils ont gagné un grec entre en bout, ils ont mission à cette ici, un effort gouvernement pays pour essayer d'établir l'égalité en parmi les hommes et les femmes pays à en plan pour développer cette ci Nous avons tout ça là, qui a sorti dans un plan pour entretenir le développement national de l'égalité pour nous faire des hommes en pays cette ci Pour ça, ça venu en réalité en l'année 2011, après le bac pour le développement de l'Ibla, nous fait un assessment pour essayer pour adresser à dans ces faiblesses qui assessment ça a découvert et que parmi eux, ses faiblesses à balance égale entre hommes et femmes, accomplissement éducation à parmi les hommes qui très bas, situation côté panier à ses travail et étonnement, et aussi une situation côté à d'ailleurs haut, à d'ailleurs haut degré, les enfants qui ont bas conduit, ils ont seul power. Bon, pour le développement quand il a présenté le gouvernement cette ci il y a 115 000 dollars à l'année 2014 pour commencer le projet. A. Mais il va te continuer avec le programme Sala Vue en opération juste à l'année 2017. Selon le coordinateur projet, Dr. Claudia Louis, l'ayant gardé mon hier, c'est le ministère et le département du gouvernement qui a implémenté le programme. Il a manqué une bonne égalité parmi nous et les femmes. Donc, lui, il a eu l'assurance qui a présenté le projet Sala qui a été fait possible pour le gouvernement adresser ça de façon qui mérite. Collège Niagara a trouvé succès en ces trois proposals que le gouvernement a constitué pour procurer le gouvernement et puis la consultation des projets. Le Collège Niagara a collaboré ensemble et puis banque pour le développement de et le gouvernement s'est ici à ce spécial projet. Le ministre de l'Éducation, honorable Dr. Gail Rigobot, a déclaré que l'initiative ça n'est pas seulement concernée les femmes, mais aussi pour les hommes. Il m'a dit que le qui a adressé le développement, c'est un guide pour l'avancement des affaires sociales et économiques. Dr. Rigobert veut dire que si nous ne pas considérer ça qui a affecté les hommes et les femmes, concernant le WEG qui a gouverné le développement, nous avons trouvé que ce WEG a penché plus à ce façade. façade. Il a été engagé là, il a été engagé depuis le 6 mois de mai, côté a été engagé dans l'entraînement pour les officiers à département qui concernait des affaires de hommes et des femmes, puis il y a des affaires civiles qui ont ces différents ministères et département gouvernement. La discussion a commencé pour implémenter un plan pour improuver l'action en affaires de développement, mariage, des affaires agricoles et touristiques à cette ci Ni officiers agricoles et aussi touristiques, bienvenue à l'initiative de cela. Comme des industries qui ont collaboré ensemble pour augmenter et entretenir les produits et les performances économiques de ce secteur. Généralement, ça a été dit. Grande discussion a été tenu les go grecs dans ces différents secteurs, secteurs-là qui ont assisté. Il est sorti au ministère de l'Agriculture et Touristique, à ce moment-là, l'organisation CADI et l'association Hôtel et Affaires Touristiques, à cette ci Il a tenu aussi les organisations agricoles et affaires touristiques, sorti en région, qui ont 
avec l'organisation pour cet pays Caraïbes la OECS. Comme c'est la responsabilité pour supporter la diversification économique agricole. Le représentatif organisation en région a été adressé à Tile Sala et qui a parlé de l'importance pour Sala pour entretenir la vie des peuples en cette ci et pour les chefs de gouvernement supporter assez fort l'économie agricole pour faciliter les produits qui ont agent et aussi complémenter le secteur touristique. Il y a aussi concerné qui pour les autorités considérer pour implémenter le web qui a embrassé le changement de climat pour ces initiatives agricoles et affaires touristiques à cette ci Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasné félicite l'établissement nouveau à l'école secondaire Choiseuil. Nous avons une grande cérémonie lundi pour être ouvert officiellement des chambres neuf à l'école secondaire Salah qui bâtit pour résister au mauvais temps. Premier ministre Chasné déclare qu'il en temps passé, la majorité de l'école pays a souffert après un cyclone parce qu'il a parti de qualité de résistance contre des as. Le premier ministre a remarqué qu'à présent, l'école secondaire Choiseuil, quand ça a résisté, il y a un désastre primaire et qu'il n'y a encore resté fermé pour ces quantités de longtemps après le passage de un cyclone. Le premier ministre a aussi fait référence pour l'importance qu'il y ait une place de secours, de voir un désastre pour tenir les résidents qui peuvent trouver affectés, par exemple, si on peut être a pas mis l'autre problème. Le premier ministre a aussi parlé d'habiliter l'école secondaire à présent pour amasser de l'eau, la pluie, pour servir un caillon de gaz. Si un caillon des as. On a chassé annoncé aussi. L'école là, quand il y a un générateur pour produire courant. Alors, situation qui était faite, qui était affectée, choisie, il y a un temps, mauvais temps, qui était croisé, pont en piaille, avec pont soufrière, qui était quitté comme une choisie, complètement, par quoi, sans pièce d'assistance. Le Premier ministre a chassé déclaré qu'à présent, le village là, il y a plus de pouvoir préparer une école de générateur ça là, à l'école secondaire. Le Premier ministre Chasné a cru qui aussi qui initiative ça là qui indiqué les étudiants pour apprécier la nécessité pour adresser le changement de climat et l'effort pour abattre les à dans toute façon qui est possible. Et c'est pour ça que nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous dire que vous avez une nouvelle vie. Je vous remercie pour vous. À présent, je vous remercie pour vous. Nisha. Merci pour vous, Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are fair, becoming cloudy at times with a few showers. The Atlantic high pressure system will maintain a moderate easterly wind flow across the Eastern Caribbean region during the next few days. Low level clouds moving across the wind flow will bring a few scattered showers over the Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. The tides for Castries Harbour was high at 1.35 pm and is low at present. The tide for VA4 Bay, high at 2.42 p.m. and will be low again at 8.23 p.m. The seas moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.36 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.